Hey guys, thanks for showing up. In today's video, we're gonna talk about the essentials of maintaining proper form. We always know people say, maintain proper form, maintain proper form. But that's kind of like somebody saying, you know, save for retirement. You're like, yeah, yeah, I know, I, I know about it. And then when you're entering your retirement stage, you're like, damn, I wish I would have saved for retirement. So when you're thinking about proper form, you have to understand that it is absolutely critical to maintain your, the joints and the muscles of your body. Let's just do a little bit of anatomy review. You've got ligaments, tendons, muscles, bones, okay? A ligament attaches a bone to a bone. So the ligament will attach my forearm bone to my upper arm bone, my humerus. The tendon will attach the muscle to the bone so that you can perform work. My muscle does the, does the action, the tendon pulls on the bone and the bone completes the action. So ligaments and the tendons are part of your joints that help to stabilize the load. Each independent joint has its own structural load capacity, okay? Similarly to this deck, which is why I'm here to talk about this analogy. Your joints have a structural integrity just like this deck. Let's just say this deck can support, safely, can support 20 people. But you know what? Man, I can fit 30 people back here. I can put 35 people back here and we partied all night. And then we're gonna party next week. And we're gonna keep doing it all the time, all the time, all the time. But what I've done is I've surpassed the structural load that this deck can safely handle. And eventually, sooner or later, one of those days, earlier than it really should have, it's gonna go down and then I'm gonna go, oh crap, what did I do? So we're gonna talk about your joints and how to maintain that. Now, for the purposes of my analogy that says joints are just like a deck, it's important to illustrate two of the main points. One, if you overload the structural capacity far beyond what it is used to, you're going to bring about some sort of a damage. 20 people deck, you put 30 people on, there's going to be some sort of a, a premature wearing or some sort of structural damage. The second way to deteriorate this structure is by adhering to the structural capacity, but by doing something that isn't proper. For example, you could put 20 people on a 20 person deck, but now have those 20 people start jumping up and down or leaning on the handrails or, I mean, body slamming or wrestling on this deck. The deck was designed to hold 20 people, just not in the way that you're using it. And that's very important about your joints. Imagine people are pushing on the handrails. Those handrails are going to hold and hold and hold until eventually they just go down. Your joints are very similar. You don't want to use improper form or putting them at risk so that eventually they're just going to break down. If you had a very keen eye, if you were uh, some sort of an engineer or a, a deck builder or whatever, a carpenter, whatever, uh, and you studied this deck and you're like, you know what man, having those 30 people, 35 people on it, you know, I'm starting to see some of the wood planks getting broken down, they're wearing down, the support columns, those solid structures that anchor it to the ground, those things are starting to get broken down and worn down, but we don't know, we just look at the planks in the wood because we, it's my deck, <laughs> it looks fine. A keen eye would be able to tell you those things are happening. We don't have to wait for the keen eye. We know that it should only, 20 people should be on it. When you're doing certain moves that are putting the structural integrity of your joints at, it's maxing them out, it's putting them past the threshold. You're prematurely gonna wear them down, you're gonna cause some sort of a problem. You're gonna cause some sort of an injury and sometimes those injuries are irreversible. You got some guys that, you know, they love to do the T bench press. We talked about this in an earlier video. The wide T bench press, you, they love that stretch and oh, it feels so great. That stretch is your anterior deltoid tearing and ripping down. You do that enough times with enough force and your shoulder's gonna go bye-bye. It's gonna be gone. But then we have to break each movement down and say, I'm getting a really good return in my strength from this exercise, but what am I possibly doing? When I do really heavy squats, is it possible that my lower back is at a premature risk for getting injured? Yes. And you'll say, well, I squatted like this for years and years and it never, never, I never had a problem with it. That's where the deck analogy comes into place. But let's just revert back and we'll talk about each, each body part. We know the best moves for each body part. 
But what we fail to do sometimes, and quite often, is understanding the risks that those moves bring about and how we can minimize those risks while still getting the strength gains. When you're doing the bench press, I've posted several videos, physios and doctors talking about narrowing up the grip and bringing those arms down towards a, a more narrow grip and down from the 90 degree wide position will save that shoulder joint a tremendous amount of strain. The angular rotation, the torque that happens on the shoulder joint. The same thing with squats. Some people, uh, many people, I can't say a percentage because I don't know, but many people will experience a lower back issue with squats. It's almost bound to happen. It's almost like a rite of passage. You get a lower back injury from doing squats. Because there's that, that um, when you're in the bottom position uh, of, the, of the squat, I believe there's six times the load of which you're carrying is placed on your lower back because of the angle of your body. So you're squatting with a 200 pound bar, you're squatting with 50 pounds, doesn't matter. Take your body weight, add that load, multiply that by six, and that is that may be the load that's placed on your lower back. Do that enough times, you're gonna wear it out, even if you do it with great form. So then you gotta figure out ways to make it a little more safe for your body. Just to talk about those moves in particular, uh, widening or narrowing up the grip for the bench press, maybe doing step ups or single legged squats to get that lower body power development without that load being placed on your lower back and stuff. With the single leg exercises, you can use half of the weight much lower weights to get the same benefit because you're now working unilaterally and you're not working with a huge load. But that's for another video. The great thing about the human body is it's adaptable and it gets stronger. So let's take this deck. It can only sustain 20 people. But if I put 21 people on this deck and party, I just surpassed that maximum just by a little bit. And with proper rest, or and then if I let the deck hang, sit and recover for two or three days, what happens? Nothing happens. The deck just wears down. Human body is different. It will expand, it will adapt, and it will grow. So, taking that analogy to our body, let's say I do an exercise that my structural load, we're using fictional numbers, is 20, and I put 21 on it. With enough rest, recuperation, and proper nutrition, my joints will slowly build up to handle a threshold of 21. And then it goes to 22, and then 25, and then 30, and so on. That's progressive overload. That's the basis of strength training, getting stronger. Your body adapts, and then goes. You cannot do these large swings in force because that joint's gonna, it won't be able to sustain it. Small incremental growths safely and with proper form are going to give you those long-term goals and allow you to stay injury free, stay in the gym. You know, wide T push, wide T bench press, uh, great, three months, made great gains. Oh, blew up my shoulder. Now guess what? You're back to square one and probably not even square one, square before square one because now you have an underlying shoulder problem that you gotta routinely cater to and take care of it. What happens when your shoulder goes? Your back exercises are going to suffer. Your whole upper body is connected by that shoulder. But that's not just talk about the shoulder. Let's talk about the chest. Let's talk about the lower back. Your lower back goes and everything is going to suffer from that injury. So the, the purpose of this video is just to talk about we know the best moves out there for each body part. You can find them on the internet. There's, there, every strength training program is based on these best moves. But what we have to do is either see a qualified professional or think about your own to realize how to make that move as safe as possible while still returning the strength gains and the, and the effectiveness of that move. So think about it. Um, think about the deck. I can party out here with a lot of people, eventually it's going to go down and then I'm in big trouble. So I just want you to think about some of the topics that we brought about in this video and if you have a question or a comment or you just want to start a little bit of dialogue, shoot me a message, shoot me an email, uh, comment on the YouTube page. Um, it, I'll always love to hear from you guys. So thanks for listening and thanks for showing up.